Hello my goblins and ghouls, my name is Steven. I bought a danger puddle. This is a pot of molten solder. I promise it has an actual purpose, it's not just for fun. If you're new here, I started a project around an open source pick and place machine which is used for assembling parts onto circuit boards and a couple years ago I started a company selling them. If you want to start from the beginning, you can click here to catch up. So. Why did we buy a danger puddle? Well, we recently went into production for the V3 Lumen PNP, which comes almost completely assembled. It takes just a little bit to bolt the main parts together, but that means that we have to do all of the through hole soldering for all of the components. At first, we did this by hand, and it was miserable. It was, it was actually the worst. <laughs> but then we looked into what's called dip soldering. This is where you take all of the little through hole parts and you drop them into your board, and then you literally dip it into a pot of molten metal and it just automatically solders all of them for you immediately. It is way easier, it is way more fun, and it's also way more consistent too. But it has been a struggle trying to tune the process of getting it to work right. We've been having a really hard time protecting certain parts of the bottom of the board that we don't want to just totally fill with solder. Like the mounting holes, for example. When we dip the board in, it just wicks solder up into the mounting holes and then you can't mount the board anymore. So we've been putting capped on tape all over it and it takes forever and it works really well, but it's a really annoying step and we don't want to just fly through capped on tape. So we looked into what the industry does to do this and they put their boards in what's called a pallet. And it's a piece of fiberglass and epoxy. Drop your board into with all your loose through hole stuff populated but not soldered. And then you dip the pallet with the board in it down into the molten solder. And the pallet will protect certain parts but expose other ones so you're only soldering what you want. Well, epoxy and fiberglass is just a PCB. So I figured why don't we just make a PCB that acts as a pallet. So this is the pallet that I designed, and it just has cutouts in this board exactly where we want to solder all the through hole. So if I take my motherboard here and drop it in, right like that, you can see that it exposes only the through hole components that we actually want to solder when we do the dip. Hopefully we could just drop a board into this thing and go boop, and it will perfectly solder all the stuff we need and none of the stuff that we don't. So that didn't work. Like at all. Literally nothing got soldered. It was like I didn't even dip it in to begin with. So I sat down for an hour and chamfered the heck out of the pallet. I figured that the sharp edge of the pallet PCB was keeping the metal from being able to flow up and touch the, the main PCB really easily. So if I gave it a bit more room and kind of chamfered the pallet, it'd make it easier for the metal to flow in. What a goofy object. <laughs> By the way, this is Bryce, one of our newest hires at Opulo. How long have you been working at Opulo? Uh, I've been working at Opulo since May, uh, so like five months. Oh my god, really? Yeah. What do you do at Opulo? When you come into work, what, what do you do here? Uh, so I'm the manufacturing engineering technician, which means I do the manufacturing. Uh, so I'm running the print farm, I'm making boards, my hands are all over the production aspect. If you had an opportunity to drive any car, one lap around a racetrack, what car would you drive around it? Probably the Ford RS200. It's an old Group B rally car. Group B was probably one of the most dangerous racing series that has ever existed. <laughs> um, the thing's a death trap, um, <laughs> and it sounds like a blast. <laughs> All right, so I went through and I sanded down all of the bottom of the pallet PCB and it looks like a mess, but at least now all of the surfaces come to a sharp point. So Bryce has a board with all of the components populated in it. So we're gonna drop it into this and see if we can get a better solder job than we did last time. Uh, oh, we should flux it first without the pallet. Because okay. it doesn't fit in the tougher yep. All right, so Bryce, what are you dipping it in here? I'm dipping it in Flux, uh, Kester 959T. Okay, so now we're gonna put it into the pallet. All right, that's in there good. And now we're gonna, we're gonna sizzle the hell out of this thing. Okay. <laughs> Woo. Oh, that's better. And also a lot worse. <laughs> better in some ways, way worse than others. Interesting. So some of them it totally got, and other ones, there's like whole batches of it. See if you can get a good view of it. Like all just completely filled up. All of these pads over here just totally full soldered. <laughs> I honestly have no idea. At this point, I was at a total loss. I had literally no idea what was going wrong. I even tried cutting out all of the little protective pieces for covering all the stuff I didn't want to be touching the molten metal, but still nothing. 
So I just cleared my calendar and decided to tune absolutely every variable until I got it to work. I knew people do this every day with wonderful results, so it must have just been something that I was doing wrong. And finally, I got it. This is 302 with preheat. Okay, I have been tuning the process for trying to get this dip down for the past like two and a half hours, and I finally got it perfect. Okay, maybe I shouldn't say perfect. There's still a couple little jumpers here that aren't quite perfect. That guy didn't get soldered, but for the most part, it just did it without a problem. This is also having just come from this. <laughs> So what's different between these two boards? I'm pretty sure that the thing that we've been doing wrong with the dip soldering so far was the temperature. If the temperature is too low, as soon as you dip the board into the metal, the metal on the top surface touches the bottom of the leads, not the board, and it immediately lowers its temperature. You're introducing something colder into the hot metal, so the temperature of that metal that it's touching drops like crazy. And if it drops too fast, it's no longer molten anymore and it solidifies. So now you have this kind of barrier of all this cold metal that's on the tip of all of these components and it's never getting hot enough to reach up to the board. And then I made the mistake of trying to dip it again, which was not the smartest thing in the world. And then it does the same thing, except there's even more metal there to wick even more heat out of the molten pool and then collect even more metal on it. And now I have this monstrosity. This thing weighs so much. <laughs> so the trick is to get it hotter. We were keeping it at like 270 C because I figure the melting temperature of tin is like 230 C I think. But the temperature of the molten metal drops so much when you contact it with something that's effectively room temperature. So you have to have it really high in order to combat that. I think I have mine at 305 now and I preheat it. So I held it with my tongs over the metal for maybe like 45 seconds or so. And then after it was getting kind of close to up to temp, at least it wasn't gonna completely lick all the heat out. It was still gonna be kind of close to the temperature of the metal. I went whoop, nice quick little dip and it looks beautiful. This was a tricky thing to tune. There were a few different variables. I wasn't sure if it was the time or maybe the flux that we were using or, or the palette because I was trying to use the palette as well. This was a weird one to try and figure out. But ultimately we got a pretty good process. There's still some tuning I wanna do and find out how to get all those little uh, little guys that didn't quite work perfectly really tuned. So we just dip and it's perfect. And I have to figure out how to get this out. <laughs> That's cool. Whew. So here's the final process of going through and doing dip soldering to solder all of the parts on the Lumen PMP motherboard in one clean fell swoop. It starts with one board in the Needs THT bin. This one is past our pogo pin test jig, so I know that all the pins are soldered correctly. And I also have checked all the USB things. So I soldered on the USB connector and I tried talking serial to it. I tried talking DFU, made sure Marlin was on it. So now I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna put it in this guy, which is a tiny little jig that just holds the board up so that all the through hole pins can stick down through it and populate all the parts into it. We have to manually assemble every single connector into these blank boards. And there really isn't a better way to do it. There are some machines that will do this, but they're like crazy expensive. Another thing that definitely needs to be automated for mid-scale. But for now, we do it like this. All right, so now we got all our components in the board in the jig. The next step is to flux the board. And we just keep it in a little Tupperware because otherwise it all evaporates and it gets gross. We modified these salad tongs to have these tiny little grippers so it's just a little nubbin that's just enough to grab the board and this works really well and originally we used this for dipping before I did the whole pallet thing and these actually work great and these are like four bucks stainless steel it's awesome so now the board goes in and I'm being really careful to not let it get too much up on top of the surface of the board I'm trying to just keep it on the bottom there really isn't too much of a practical reason for this aside from just it makes the board look kind of crappy if it's on the top so I'm just trying to dip the bottom half of the board and making sure it wicks up into all the components. And now I'm gonna put it in the pallet. Now on goes the respirator. 
in the fan. I gotta skim it and then dip. That's pretty good. I see one pin that isn't soldered, but that's pretty good. Oh, hold on. That's better. So now usually what I do is I let this sit by the window and cool off, have a little breeze come in and let it chill. Then after wicking away any bridges and soldering any missed pins, we have a finished board. And it looks super good. The craziest thing about this whole thing to me is that we have a literal paper sticker for our serial number for the motherboards on the bottom of the PCB. It is paper and we dip it in flux and then we dip it in molten tin and it's fine. It's like totally okay. We print it out on my paper printer and it just works great. Now we have all the parts soldered, but we still need to check all the through hole parts. They look great, but the thing that matters is does it actually work? And that's why we built this thing, but that's for another video. Anyway, that's it for this one. I'm sorry I haven't been keeping up with my normal schedule. Turns out it's pretty hard to run a company, a YouTube channel, do R&D, hiring, customer support, production. It's a lot. <laughs> I'm gonna try and stay consistent with some kind of schedule, but things might be sporadic. Also, I'm gonna be in Pasadena, California for Hackaday Supercon this November 4th through 6th. And I'm going to be in Munich, Germany for Electronica. Elector is sponsoring Oculo for going there and being part of their booth. It's for their fast forward startup competition and we're super stoked, we're going to Germany. I was thinking about doing meetups for one or both of these events. So hop into my Discord and give me a shout if you're in the area and you wanna say hi. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Say everything you just said again because I was way zoomed in when you did that. <laughs> We're gonna chew it again.